What up Flow Squad? In this video, I'm going to show you how to replace your lower control arm on your Toyota Tacoma. Let's get this thing started. This video was brought to you by K-Flow's Crib, your number one resource for Tacoma DIY projects. Make sure you smash that subscribe button so you're up to date with my latest video releases. Before I get started, I just want to let you all know that November is Men's Health Issues Awareness Month. And to help raise awareness, I am growing out my facial hair. I don't usually grow my facial hair because people say I start looking like Ryan Gosling. And I don't want to drop any more panties. And additionally, for the month of November, I will be donating my Google AdSense revenue towards men's cancer research and awareness. So the first thing we do is jack up the truck and put her on jack stands. Then we remove the front wheels. We can then remove the front skid plate with 12 millimeter socket. Now let's go to the lower control arm and remove the cotter pin on the lower ball joint. Let's brush off any corrosion or dirt and apply some PB blaster. Use a 24 millimeter socket to loosen the castle nut. And this is important that you do this while it's still on the truck. Use a 19 millimeter socket to loosen the steering knuckle bolts. Use a 19 millimeter socket to remove the nut on the lower shock mount. Use a 19 millimeter socket and wrench to loosen the lower control arm bolt to the frame for both the front and the rear side of the lower control arm. Jack up the lower control arm until the truck starts lifting. Remove the two 19 millimeter bolts to the steering knuckle. Now we can jack down the lower control arm to remove any tension and remove that lower shock bolt completely. Remove the lower control arm bolt to the frame completely. The rear part is easy. All we have to do is remove the nut and remove the bolt completely. Partially stick that bolt back in. Now the front is going to be more difficult because of an inner sleeve. Remove the nut, cam and bolt using a 19mm socket and a pry bar. Use a hammer to push out the inner sleeve from the rear. Once it starts getting too deep to hammer, use a pin punch to assist. Soak that sleeve with PB blaster and use vice grips and work it back and forth until the corrosion breaks loose. Keep applying PB blaster and keep working it outwards until it comes off completely. Use a pry bar to remove the lower control arm from the lower shock mount. You can also use the pry bar to remove that lower control arm completely away from the frame. So we take the lower control arm and place it on two by fours. We thread that castle nut back but allow about half an inch of clearance. And using a heavy hammer, you can separate the ball joint from that bracket. Wire brush all the corrosion at the frame and clean the surfaces with acetone and let it dry. Apply some primer and paint and it's usually best if you let it dry overnight. Now we can clean the ball joint bracket with some brake cleaner. Use a wire brush to brush off all the crud and dirt until all the mounting holes are nice and clean. Apply some wheel bearing grease to act as a corrosion inhibitor and protect it at the frame's mounting points. It will also help greatly with the reassembly. And you'll see that during the installation. Now we can prepare the new lower control arm. Remove the castle nut and protective plastic shield. Install the bracket and finger tighten the castle nut. Now let's prepare the new hardware. Here I'm using aftermarket greasable cam bolts. Use wheel bearing grease to grease the bolt shafts 
prior to assembly. Make sure to install the grease fittings and keep them finger tight for now. Grease the inner sleeves of the lower control arm mounting points. Install the lower control arm to the frame and use a rubber mallet to tap that lower control arm into place. Take your time when you do this. It may take a little while for you to align them. Install the rear bolt first. This one is the longer bolt, so make sure that the grease fitting is on the inner side as you see here. Install the sleeve at the front. You may have to tap that lower control arm to line up the holes. Install the bolt outwards. Now we can also install the cam and install the lock nut. Use two 24mm sockets at the front to further drive down the lock nut, but keep everything loose for now. Use a 22 and a 21mm socket at the rear to drive down that nut as well. Pull up on the lower control arm and line up the holes with the lower shock mount to install the bolt and install the washer and nut. Let's finger tighten that for now. Jack up the lower control arm to meet that ball joint bracket with the steering knuckle. If the truck does start lifting before the lower control arm meets the steering knuckle, you would need to use a ratchet strap against the upper control arm to close that gap in between. Line up the holes and hand tighten those steering knuckle bolts and the castle nut for now. Torque down the 19mm steering knuckle bolts to 118 foot pounds. Tighten down the 24mm castle nut and torque it down to 103 foot pounds. Tighten down the 19mm lower shock bolts 61 foot pounds. Tighten down the frame bolts for both the front and the rear to 103 foot pounds. The orientation of those cam bolts right now doesn't matter because you will need to realign the truck. Tighten down the Zerk fittings with a 7mm wrench, then shoot some grease into those fittings until the grease starts oozing out of the sides. Make sure to clean up any excess grease. Here's a shot of the finished installation, and man does that look sexy. We can now reinstall the skid plate and reinstall the front wheels and torque them down to 85 foot pounds. So that's pretty much it for this video guys. I hope you enjoyed it. I do just have a few tips and tricks to share with you before you go. You might need to cut that inner sleeve if the corrosion gets really bad and the inner sleeve is really seized. And I would advise using either an angle grinder or a sawzall. Either way works. Just make sure you use the one that you're more comfortable with using. And be careful because you don't want to damage the frame itself. Now I also wanted to bring up the topic of the white line bushings because they are a very good product for the lower control arm on your Toyota Tacoma. Now my biggest issue here in the Northeast and along with many of my viewers is that the salt environment is terrible. What happens is the salt spray will actually corrode the inner and outer bushing on that lower control arm. So it will make the outer bushing really really tough to remove from the lower control arm. You'll need specialized tools including a high temperature torch to melt that outer sleeve out and if you're not careful you can actually damage that lower control arm. And on top of that for the installation you're going to need to use a 20 ton press which not many people have so I would highly advise against it if you're living here in the northeast or any of the salt belt areas. So that's pretty much all I got for today guys. All the materials and tools used in this video will be provided in the link below. And if you like this video, make sure you give me a like because that does help my channel out. And share this video with your friends as well as subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet. And if you really, really like my video, please consider being a patron for my channel by going onto my Patreon page. Go to patreon.kflow-script.com to see how. Thanks again guys, until next time, peace out.